Hello and a very warm welcome to you. In this video, I'm going to uh, go through all the questions which have been sent to me. Try my best to answer them for you about Google Ads. So I will show you some workflows, some tips, techniques, how to do stuff in Google Ads. So anything and everything to do with Google Ads. If you have got any questions, then by all means, uh, please send it to me on the email. Uh, which is on the screen right now and I'll put them on our uh, schedule for the forthcoming videos so before I get started if you haven't subscribed to our channel please do so as we upload videos on a uh, every daily basis pretty much on every weekday and you hit the bell button to be the first one to be notified when we do upload any a new content so before I get started, once again, uh, thank you so much for sending these questions in and let's get started. Okay, so the first question is, what's the difference between Google AdSense and Google AdWords, uh, which is now called Google Ads? The difference between these is in one account, you set up a ads and on the other one, which is the AdSense, this is where um, you get um, your blog or your website monetized. What I mean by that is this. Let's hop onto Google so I can explain it a bit better. Um, okay. So if I go to Google and say buy iPhone. See these ads. These are all ads and these these are shopping ads and these are text ads. These are controlled by by Google Ads or Google AdWords. When you go to YouTube and you see an ad which pops up uh, before the video is played or during the video, that's also an ad. And when you search something on YouTube and the ads pop up along the top, those are also ads. Let's go to another website where we can see how the ads are displayed so let's go to huffington post and you will see banner ads pop up like this one that's an ad that is run through adsense so what this website or blog has done is allowing google this space or real estate to place the ad so that's 970 by 970 by 250 pixels. This is a square shaped um, thing. It's a 300 by 250 pixels. So that's a, another ad by another company. And there will be lots of these ads dotted around um, this website or a blog. And these, this is how blogs and websites monetize their content. So when somebody clicks on this ad, the advertiser, which is this company advertising Jurassic Park, will get charged by Google Ads. And Huffington Post is going to earn a percentage of that click. So we don't know how much, but that's how Huffington Post are monetizing their content by creating, uh, by letting Google Ads uh, display these ads over here. So hope that made sense and uh, thank you so much for sending that question. So so next question is, how can I access the free Google Keyword Planner? Okay, that's fairly straightforward. Let's go into the Google account and under tools and settings, you go under planning and keyword planner once this loads up um, I'll very quickly show you how to use this and let's say we go with car insurance along the top what you need to do is to change the the country or the location where you want the search terms uh, to show for so if I want to target USA, I can target in that way and have multiple countries, all locations, zip codes, um, counties or states. 
I will then change that to United Kingdom and USA. If I don't want the UK, I'll, all I do is cross it out. And you will see the numbers change. Now, if you don't see these numbers over here, and you might see something like 100 to 1000 or 1000 to 10,000, that means that Google is not showing you the average monthly searches because you are not using your a Google Ads account regularly. Once you start to use your account regularly, you will get this accurate uh, numbers over here. So now I can see lots of these um, keywords. I can either select all of them. There are 791. I can either add it to a plan, a new ad group, which I would not recommend you do add all your 791, but you can select a few and then add them to a new ad group and in what mesh type. Or you can copy them and paste it in a spreadsheet, sort them out from there. On the right hand side, um, it's you've got all these tabs. They come in really handy because if you don't want to bid for brands or you want to bid for brands you can see straight away that in the US for car insurance you've got all these companies Geico, State, Auto, Progressive all of these as well as car makes and other brands which you can uh, go after or you can exclude them as negative keywords if you only want to go after non-branded keywords and what I mean by that is this Car insurance is a non-branded keyword, but car insurance, um, let's say Nissan, Toyota is a branded keyword or any of these other brands like where well, these companies have got, uh, where are the other brands? There you go. Uh, clear cover, good to go, and all these are branded because sometimes people are looking and searching for their phone numbers or support or something like that or recovery or a breakdown number so you can exclude these branded terms from your search terms or from your keyword list and add them as negative keywords the other one where you can also look and get some really good ideas as to how to organize your ad groups is like this I can make an ad group for car insurance quotes which is different to cheap car insurance which is again different to online car insurance. So I'm getting lots of ideas that in here, in these 791 keywords, we've got 154 keywords with the words car insurance code or cheap car insurance 98. Then you dig over here and it will break down some more products, business insurance, home insurance, farm insurance, classic car so if you don't do classic car insurance then you put classic as a negative keyword life as a negative keyword farm home business all of these will give you some really good ideas for creating a negative as well as a positive um, keyword list so all I would do is select all of these download them sort them out in a spreadsheet and then make up your positive keyword list as well as your negative keyword list. How do I add negative keywords in Google Ads? Good question. Negative keywords are your best friend in Google Ads. If you don't want to waste money, increase your ROI or ROAS, increase your conversions, um, lower your cost per conversion, and increase your conversion rate, then you need to use negative keywords properly. And if you are running a shopping campaign, then obviously the whole shopping campaign is run uh, with negative keywords. So you need to be very clever and creative as to how to use um, negative keywords. Because if you use the wrong match type um, negative keyword, you may block a good keyword uh, with that negative. So you can add negative keywords at ad group level campaign level and account level what we tend to do is all the generic uh, negative keywords which we know that we don't want to run ads for throughout the account 
we create a account level negative keyword list and then add keep adding these negatives in that list and the whole account is going to be blocked by those keywords or by those negatives and you save a lot of money so here's how you do it let's go into our account and we go to uh, shared library negative keyword list and at the moment we i mean this is my uh, test account but we've got one built up from before i'll create a new one you can call it whatever you like we call it account level negatives or negative list or whatever uh, you will need to add a um, keyword in there to save it because if you don't um, it won't save I'm just going to put in test and my list is made up with one keyword now this is really important at the moment it is not applied to any campaigns that means even if you if i keep on adding negatives in this list nothing is going to work because these this list has not been applied to any campaigns whereas over here you can see that this list has been applied to 70 campaigns so you need to have a task either on a daily or a weekly basis that you are going to make sure that this list is applied to all the campaigns which are live in the account you check that apply to campaigns you can select all of them it really doesn't matter if the old ones are paused because sometimes you can enable them and it will not harm your a campaign if this negative keyword list has been applied and I apply it and now I've got all my campaigns whether paused or enabled applied to this negative keyword list so now all I need to do is we go through the search term query report and come in here keep adding to this list and that's how you do this what is the difference between search and display ads uh, for Google Ads? Uh, they're two different networks completely. And you shouldn't be running the same campaign on the search as well as display. Because the metrics are completely different, is going to make things very difficult for you to understand the data. What I would recommend is you run a search campaign separately and a display campaign separately. So let's look at the search campaign and how we separate this out. We go into our account, go to campaigns, new campaign, and you select a goal. I'll say let's select a leads. And you got the choice over here. So search campaign is when somebody goes on Google and searches for something, something like this. So when I go to Google and search for a product or a service, the shopping ad came up over here and a couple of ads popped up um, on here. That is the search campaign. The display campaigns are these ones, where you go to websites like Huffington Post, New York Times, ESPN, BBC, and you see all these ads, banner ads, as well as text ads pop up, as well as on YouTube, when you see these banner ads, or um, video uh, in-stream video ads, uh, which play before your video starts. These are on the display network. Hence, I said earlier on that they are completely two different networks and you must always keep it separate. Now, you must be thinking, why am I saying that I keep it separate when I'm selecting a campaign type over here? So if I select search, 
that does not mean that it will not show up on on Google so if I just select um, this is why what I meant when you are running a search campaign you must uncheck this box because otherwise your ads are also going to run on the display network although they will say easy way to get additional conversions at similar or lower cost than search with unused search budget what you will find is most of the budget is going to be spent over here and you probably will not get the same conversions at similar or lower cost than the search network although the search network is expensive than the display network what I found is when I do run uh, campaigns on display network I run them separately and with a different funnel where we need to do a fair bit of remarketing as well because there's no intent that is the biggest difference between these two you got to understand these network why would the conversion rate be a lot higher on search because when we have a problem a pain or an emergency we go to Google and search for the plumber or the carpenter or the car insurance and whatnot whereas on the display network we're going there for education entertainment browsing we're not going to these websites or blogs to particularly search for something we're just there to browse and just like uh, reading a magazine you will see ads in there you stumble upon a brand or a product and the same thing applies over here on the display network you need multiple touch points before somebody will consider you or your business to and click on your ads whereas on the search campaign if you have got a a, a, a leaking tap and you need a plumber you are not going to be phoning 20 different plumbers to uh, get the best price you will just want somebody who is reasonable and who can come to your home or to your office as quickly as possible whereas on the display network is the complete opposite so this is why I said you should never put these two together in the same campaign always 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 uncheck this because this is checked as a default when you're setting up these campaigns that's how you want to keep it what's better to use maximize conversions or target CPA for Google Ads um, there's no one is not better than the other uh, maximize conversions is a different way of bidding compared to the target CPA and here's how I would reply to this question it's a very good question someone has sent and thank you for sending this in when you are running display or uh, YouTube ads especially you can also I guess run search ads as well that will also apply to it uh, go, you, we need to Google needs to know what a conversion is this is the first thing which they need to know and then once Google knows the algorithm or the machine knows who we are looking for it's going to go and get that customer or that lead for us maximize conversions is great at doing that so if you don't have any data in your account and it's a brand new campaign or a brand new account you've never run Google Ads before and you're starting for the first time and you don't know how to manage the bids manually I would recommend that you start with maximize conversions leave it to Google is going to go and get you a conversion but it will be at any price or any cost now with the new maximize conversions coming in you can say that I don't want to pay more than ten dollars or hundred dollars for a conversion whatever that conversion is so you can cap it initially I wouldn't cap it let it go and bring it it may be a bit more expensive let it run for a few weeks and see what you are getting 
once you start to get the conversions, you will know that, okay, I'm getting an average price or an average conversion of such and such dollars. Then, now you again, you will find different numbers from different people. Some say 20, some say 50, some say 100. I personally like to have at least 30 to 40 conversions in the last 30 days before I switch over to the target CPA. Target CPA is when you are telling Google, I only want to pay X amount for a conversion. And then Google is going to bid accordingly into or in front of a person who they think or it thinks is likely to convert. And it's pretty good at that. At that. Google knows our surfing and searching history. It knows that I'm likely to convert or you may not likely to convert because you only click on ads. Whereas I just go through every offer and start to sign up uh, in the email list or go and buy uh, products or services or it could be the other way around. So target CPA is when you have got enough conversion data in the account and that's when I will switch over from max conversions to TCPA. Again, target CPA is being sunset and only the max conversions will be, um, uh, you'll be able to bid on uh, with either a target CPA or a target ROAS number um, in it. How do I add a call out extension in Google Ads? Yeah, good question. And it's fairly straightforward and simple. Let's go into Google Ads and show you how it is done. Okay. You go to ads and extensions and then extensions. Now I already may have built one from before, but all you would need to do is you probably see this all as uh, blank. Then you go plus, you have all these extensions here, uh, call extensions. You have an option at account level, campaign or ad group level. Um, if your call outs are generic and applicable to any service or products you sell, then I would recommend you do set this up at account level because once it's done, um it's it's done i'm sorry i've gone into the call extensions not call out uh, there you go it's the same with regards to the account campaign and ad group i'll go at account level let's say you do pizza delivery so we do free delivery let's say you have a restaurant as well and you offer free car parking. Let's say you offer 15% off on, let's do home delivery. So each call out has a maximum character count of 25 characters. And when, as you start typing in, you can see the number of uh, characters. So you get the gist how we do this. You can have a happy hour every Tuesday 6 to 7 or something like that. Uh, if I want to make it better, Tuesday 7 p.m. That sounds good and okay. Once I've done this, I don't need to worry about ever touching this. That is it. But if you got some call outs which are only applicable to a certain campaign or ad group, then you can set them up, but then you will need to manage them as and when you create new campaigns and new ad groups. Majority of the time, I've seen that these call outs are applicable at account level, and that's all you need to do and nothing else. Save it, and your call outs are. Are done and this using extensions or ad extensions are Google's best practices you must use it as many as you possibly can um, and whenever you can set them up at account level you set them up 
and set and forget. And that's it. Um, that's what you do to create all these um, extensions. How do I create Google Ads form lead ad extension? Good question. And let's hop into Google Ads and I'll show you how you can do this. It's pretty simple and straightforward and easy. Okay, you need to have your account whitelisted. Uh, if you don't have this option, uh, what you will happen is this is going to be grayed out. So you need to either contact your account manager or somebody at Google and they will um, whitelist uh, this extension for you. At the moment, most accounts are being whitelisted, so you should have this enabled in your in your account. So you go to ads and extension at the top, then extensions, come down over here, plus lead form. Now, this can only be set up at the campaign level and not at the account level. So you need to choose which one. I'll just select one campaign. I guess you can um, set up multiple campaigns. I've never tried it. Yeah, it allows you to do it. Absolutely. So either one or multiple. I'll just keep it to one for now. Okay. Um, I already have one in the account, so I'm going to go to create new. Yeah. Put your headline in uh, like you would write an ad. Uh, let me show you what we've got and then I'll create one for you. Uh, can I edit this? Okay. It will show me over here. So this is my lead form where I've got the company name, the description there, first name, surname, email, company name, work email, and the submit button. All right. So what we want to do is create your um, lead headline. It's the wrong place. So now you can see as you type in, you will see in real time what's happening here. So if you're not, if I'm not sure where this is going to go, um, where is it going on the ad? It's going to go on the ad. So I want to put in want more leads or sales. And you got over 200 characters to do that. As you can see now, this has popped up over here. Then you want to put in the questions. Check that. You can add a first name and last name as one or full name uh, as a separate one, a field or full name as one. It's up to you. Now, you need to keep into account um, that most of these forms will be filled on a mobile. So don't make this form very long. Keep it very minimalist and with the minimum number of fields because these will come in pre-filled if somebody is already uh, logged into the Google Ads account. So I'm just going to do these three. If I want to, I can have a company name as well or a work email instead of these two. See, now these ones are all pre-filled. So I don't mind having these so I can see where they are coming from because they will not need to fill these. Um, qualifying questions, you've got lots of these different business uh, categories where you can just select what is your size of your company and you have a multiple choice or a short answer 
you can do whichever one you want. If you're choosing multiple, uh, 1 to 10, 10 plus. And then oh, it will show under this drop down what is the size of your company. Always have a privacy policy. Image, it will make it look a bit more. I'll do recently used. So use a generic one rather than a headshot. So something like this one will look good. So now it looks quite nice as the background uh, in the header. Um, then you need to put in create the form submission message. You can put in the headline thank you which I keep the way it is. We'll contact you soon. Looks fine. If you want them to take another call to action if you have got any then you go put in your website URL or where you want them to go to your blog or wherever. Select a call to action for your ad. You've got apply now, contact us, learn more, get quote. So lots of really good call to actions over here. Um, I'll just do contact us. And then your description can get in there. And that's it. Well, not quite because <laughs> you need to do a couple of other things. Now, you will need to integrate your CRM over here. If you don't know how to do it, then get your webmaster to link up this uh, form to your CRM. So every time somebody fills it in, it goes straight into your CRM. And a, a really good way is to use Zapier because Zapier can link up with Google Ads and your CRM and also do other zaps so it will notify you that somebody has filled in the form or any other um, triggers you want to trigger when somebody fills in. So use that. Now, you get these two radio buttons for more volume and more qualified. To be honest with you, I'm not sure how Google uh, decides whether it's a more qualified lead or it's a less qualified lead, but you're going to get more volume. I've tried to look over here under this learn more. It doesn't give much, to be honest with you. It says here more volume is the default lead form type, but you can change the lead form type to more qualified. Okay. Thanks, Google. The option that you choose may affect the cost per lead and the number of leads collected, which you've already said before. You can change the lead form type at any time during the campaign. Doesn't give us anything as to how they are making this judgment, whether someone is more qualified or not. Um, so all they're saying is as a result of this, you will may see fewer leads. Maybe they're looking at the audience, I don't know. So if you were to ask me as to how this works, um, your guess is as good as mine, to be honest with you. Or if you know something which I don't know, then please put them in the comment box below. Um, <laughs> that is it. So I really don't think this makes a big difference. Uh, one thing which I haven't done actually is set up one Two campaigns one with more volume and one with more qualified and see whether we do get more volume because if we are getting more leads at a lower cost uh, then at least we'll know that we're getting more junk or lower quality or lower intent leads so for now I'm just going to leave it as the more qualified lead because I don't want to waste my time with the leads who are not interested in my offer and that is it. Save it and your lead form extension in Google Ads is set up. What are the different types of ad extensions? It will be easier if we go into 
an account and I'll show you. Okay, so you go to your ads and extensions and then extensions and you will see all of these which are already created. To find out which ones you can use, pretty much all of them would be uh, available. Perhaps maybe uh, this one, if this is grayed out and you can't use it, that means you need to uh, contact your Google Ads wrap as your account is not currently um, eligible for this extension. Other than that, all of these should all be good to go. Site extensions, you set up an account campaign or ad group level. I would say most of these accounts, if it's a small to medium sized business you run, I would recommend you just set it up at account level. Once it's done, you don't need to worry about it. It's all done unless you need to change something over here. Create new and then you create site links. And this is how these site links will show up on an ad. It gives you a preview um, on the mobile as well as on your desktop. So the more site links you have, I would recommend at least six so that Google is going to select the best four or the most relevant site links to go and match with your uh, with your ad. If you only give Google four, then it's less likely that they are going to show four. So this is the most time consuming extension because you need to have a headline, which is up to 25 characters, description one and description two up to 35 characters and a final URL. All of these must be to a different URL. So you can't send four different site links to the homepage. They, it won't work and they will get disapproved. So you send one to, let's say like that, contact us. And then say, get in touch for your free Google Ads account review or something like that. And then I would put in the URL over here, right? Once you've done all of these, save it. Next one, call out. This is the easiest one. So if you are a restaurant, you can put in something like free delivery, takeaways. Um, you can do 10% discount on home deliveries, happy hour or whatever. You can have as many as you want over here. I would recommend, again, five to six is more than enough. There's some advanced ones over here. So if you want this extension to show up only during certain date or um, time of the day, so do that. So if you only have, let's say, home delivery within certain times, then you, or you don't do that on the weekend, exclude that just select Monday to Friday and then all the extent call outs will show during that uh, time period. Uh, I'll do one more. This is a very interesting and new one where you can actually uh, show your image on the Google page. So that's how it will look like if Google decides to show the image extension. And it's super simple and easy to to create. All you do is set up to your uh, campaign level, and you go um, and you go create new add image. I'll just add. I think it's this one which I've got. That's fine. And you can select an image which is horizontal as well. I'm just using this to uh, show you how this is going to look. And, and that is it. So then Google is going to pick and choose which one it needs to, to show. And there's nothing else to it. So if you want to show your uh, image or your logo, I mean, headshot is fine, but logo is even better, then use that image extension to 
use that. I've not seen many companies using this. So it's, it's fairly new. Call extensions is a must if you want uh, people to call your business. This can be added at account campaign or ad group level. Again, I would recommend if it's just a small to medium sized business, use account level. Put Select your country, put your phone number in and use that conversion action calls from ads and pretty much that's it. You've got these advanced options if your business is from nine to five and you don't want that phone number to show through or that extension to show through outside of your business hours then you select your business hours of working hours monday to friday from 9 a.m to 5 p.m and that is only going to run through at that um, point in time uh, location is through your google my business um, this is for companies which have got multiple locations so i'm not going to go into it uh, into great detail Price extension is also quite handy. You will see that it makes your ad a lot bigger. Um, you can, if you are not a brand, you're selling services, then you go web design. Now, we can do um, new, no, no units, and I'm just going to put in a number. Put in some description here, so it will show underneath. Say, you can put in from, put in the final URL, add another one. Let's say, uh, Google ads, put in the price, put in the description and the final URL. Again, it makes your ads a lot bigger and it makes your ads stand out. Cancel that. And the last one, promo extension. If you've got special promotions going on, um, so account, uh, uh, campaign and ad group level, you can set up occasions. You've got all these occasions to choose from. Christmas and Valentine's Day, New Year's and all that. Black Friday and select up to percentage, let's say 50% off, put in the item, um, garden furniture, something like that. Put the full URL, final URL in, and that is going to show up like this with a little sale tag, which looks really good. And on the desktop, it's going to look like that. So just keep on adding these as well. And I think that was the last one, wasn't it? Yeah. So that's how you set up your um, ad extension. This does take a bit of time. So put in the work in and I can promise you it will be worth your while to set this up properly. And once you've done it, it is done. You don't need to uh, touch it unless you need to change something. What is the bid strategy in Google Ads? So this is how you bid. You need to have different strategies and let's hop into the Google Ads account and I can explain it a little bit more better. It really depends on your goals and what you're trying to achieve. Uh, let me go back. So what you do is first go to your campaign and then under settings, when you are creating a campaign, you will be asked to select a bidding strategy or you can also change once you have set up um, a campaign and you have been running a campaign with max conversions or target ROAS, etc. Now, this is where a little bit of confusion comes in. You click on it and then you go in here and that's all you see. And you don't see TRO as uh, maximized conversions, target CPA and all the other kinds of uh, bidding strategies. And then when you have the other one, which is over here, or select a bid strategy directly. And it says here, not recommended. 
and most people would not go in there because Google says so. Ignore that because that's the only way you can get access to all the automated and the manual bid. So the manual bidding strategy is you have total control of your CPCs, how much you are willing to pay for a click. That's why it's called manual CPC, cost per click. Automated bidding strategies are different and you don't need to worry about how much to bid. Google may bid up or down dependent on the person it thinks is likely to convert or not. So sometimes if you see high CPCs, don't be scared or don't get, um, uh, don't panic that, oh my God, they're charging so much. When I used to pay a dollar, now Google is charging $5. If you look closely, don't just look at the CPC. Look at the conversions, the cost per conversions and the conversion rate. If you are getting a better conversion or more conversions at a better price then it's worth paying that extra money because you are being entered into the premium auction where the clicks are costing a bit more than the other uh, auction so you've got your target CPA where you tell Google I want to pay X amount of money to acquire a lead or a customer or whatever that call to action is, the target cost per acquisition. Target ROAS is where you tell Google, I want to have a minimum of X amount of return on ad spend on my uh, budget. Max clicks is Google doesn't care what it charges, is going to get you as many clicks as possible for your budget. I would not recommend this unless you have got um, a goal for brand awareness or driving traffic to your website. Um, the quality of the traffic may be very low and they, may not, they might not convert. Maximize conversions is where you're telling Google, get me as many conversions as possible. I don't care about the target cost per acquisition. So that's what you want to, uh, that's where you want to run your max conversions uh, bidding. Then you can set up maximize conversion uh, value uh, where it will get you the most uh, conversion value possible within your budget. Target impression share is where you are bidding for share impressions, how many times your ads are being shown for. I can't remember the last time I used this one or that one. Um, we have used max conversion value for some shopping campaigns, but I can't remember, to be honest with you, when I use, I've ever used it. Uh, very rarely we've used it. So unless this is for branding uh, exercise where you want your ads to keep showing up all the time, then you would use this one. And the manual is obviously is fully controlled by you but you will need to bid accordingly uh, for certain keywords because some keywords are expensive and some are not very expensive. So you need to do all the home, not the homework, but the, the heavy lifting. Whereas on the automated bidding strategies, you Google does all the heavy lifting and you don't need to worry about this. Why should I link Google Analytics and Google Ads? Very good question. Um, you must link Google Analytics and Google Ads before you start running any ads because it's critical that you get as much data as possible into Google Ads to make data-driven decisions. Um, Google Analytics will allow you to see data which is not available from, uh, from Google Ads as well as import uh, conversion data, uh, audiences, as well as events. So let's go into Google Analytics first to show you how you do this. And then I'll show you how we can set up a uh, import of, um, of a conversion from analytics. So you go into your anal So you go into your analytics account. 
is this the right one this one is go into analytics and bottom left hand corner admin in the middle column under property Google Ads linking and there it is so to start a new one all you would do is you click on this and then you will see one I mean we've got multiple accounts over here that's why we are um, grade it out it's our client account so you select it and that is it it takes literally two seconds to do that once it's done um, you will see that your account has been linked over here then when you go into Google Ads and I want to import the conversion data from Google Analytics I can go into click on new tracking conversions import and there you go analytics and from here you can then add it once it's linked this is my test account hence uh, you can't see it but you can select goals as well as transactions the transaction value as well as um, uh, from Google Analytics into your Google Ads account so I would highly recommend that you do this before you start any uh, any campaigns especially when you are running display campaigns for brand awareness and you want to see uh, micro conversions uh, which are actions like time on site scroll to the bottom of the page somebody click on add to cart button so those sort of event tracking we can import as um, as micro conversions into Google Ads to see how good or bad the quality of the traffic is coming from a certain um, campaign or an ad or a keyword so that's it for this video thanks so much for uh, joining in I hope you enjoyed it if you haven't subscribed yet then please do so and hit the bell button so that you get notified for any uh, new videos when we update so once again I truly appreciate your time with me and I look forward to seeing you soon bye for now